Hello and welcome to the Easter Tower Chime Ring. My name is Christian Giebert. I'm the director of music here at this church, which is Emmanuel Lutheran in Orange. And I'm bringing this to you today because the special thing, the really unique thing we have at this church is at, on top of this bell tower, which I'm in right now. And that is an 11 bell tower chime. And so there are 11 real bells right above me. I'm on the third floor in the bell tower. And today, it's about 10 minutes before the uh, mini recital. A 30 minute uh, recital on this console is about to take place. And today, before that, I'm gonna take you up there. So let's check it out. This is the console itself. You can see that there are 11 notes. More on that later. Um, if you're familiar with the piano keyboard, you might notice that it doesn't quite look like the white and black key arrangement of a piano keyboard. So um, a lid separates this ceiling from the upper floor, otherwise our hearing would be damaged every time we played the bells. This is the fourth floor, which houses the scaffolding that the 11 bells sit on. And here they are. You can see some of the exposed windows here. I don't think it's uh, maybe easy to see, but the bells on them are inscribed John Taylor and Company founders uh, Lowbrow of England, 1938. This church was founded in 1922. It's 99 years old, and these bells were brought shortly afterwards. This, I believe, is the biggest one. It's a low G. So that's the G. And all 11 bells sit atop this scaffolding. There's another floor up there, but there are no bells up there. You can see out the west here is the um, downtown area of Orange. And this is a really good place to, uh, anywhere around here is a really good place, by the way, to hear these bell concerts. Um, which can be very easily heard from anywhere around the area. I brought a tape measure up here to see how big this, um, this largest bell actually is. So we're gonna measure it. There's the clapper. They don't swing, the bells themselves don't swing back and forth, thank goodness for that. Um, all that has to happen is that this clapper is activated to just hit the side of the bell right there. You can see, you can actually see some wearing where it's been hitting. Looks like this bell is about 42 inches in diameter. And this is the biggest one. The smallest one is an A. So unlike the Hunchback of Notre Dame Disney movie, um, and I think the real bell tower, they don't swing back and forth. All, uh, all that happens is a console down there that I play on, uh, I play on those wooden levers which are also called batons, and they activate a small, um, those small metal beams that you see that come up here right through the ground and activate each clapper. There's a small one right there. And this bell, this small bell measures to be like 19 inches. So we're gonna, we're gonna head back downstairs very carefully and I have to close this as well, otherwise it'll be too loud. Okay, and then here's the console again. So, this bell right here is the low G. I'm gonna play it really softly here. And, it would go all the way up to this A up here. It's pretty loud in here because I didn't close the, the lid. So one thing that you might notice if you're looking at a piano is that this looks a little strange, like it's like with the white keys and not all of the black keys. The way that this console works is, this uh, is actually sounding G, but the, the best way to think of it in my mind is that this looks like a C on the keyboard. So it's really just in my mind like a transposed instrument where this is a C. Uh, one through eight is a C scale in C major, and then there's two black notes of the piano that are represented here. One of them is a B flat here, 
and then an F sharp there, and then it has D up here. And the reason for this particular arrangement of 11 notes is economical. So you can do a whole bunch of melodies with just these 11 notes, and you don't even need all of the black notes in, a, in one octave of a scale of a piano, you might say. So um, the kinds of things that we're going to do today, since it's Easter, it's a joyful occasion. So some of the things that I'm going to do today are going to reflect that. And one of the things I'm going to try is to play the Westminster Chime, so that famous one in England with Big Ben in it. Big Ben is the name of the big bell inside. And every half hour, there's a particular pattern. So I'll play that right at the beginning because we're going to come up on 4.30 at the beginning of this recital. Then, when this recital is over at 5, if I'm right on time, I'll play the hour chime from Westminster Cathedral. And that ends with a big Ben. And the biggest thing we have is just our biggest bell, so we'll use that one. And, and so what I'm going to do is, the first thing you're going to hear is that half-hour chime. Before we even play any Easter music, we're then going to play another British thing. We're going to do what's called in England a change ring pattern. And basically what you're looking at here is my cheat sheet and how I've built this pattern out and printed it out so that I could play it by myself. But all this is, is a sort of a joyful peal of eight notes but you can see that the pattern changes a little bit. The pattern changes, you know, once every row. And in a certain order, it permutates through all the different ways you could combine, you could rearrange those seven notes that are changing. So seven of the eighth notes, seven of the eight notes here change each time. And long story short, uh, it gets through a whole cycle of itself and then it gets back to the beginning. And it's a very natural, like almost mathematical thing that happens. And this was around back in the time when each person had to ring a rope with its own bell. So eight people would have to do this. Um, but luckily, I have a whole console to myself, so I don't have to share. And actually, even though I have to play all the eight parts myself, uh, because I can write it down like this, I can just read the numbers. And it's actually not too, not too bad. And I'll just use the numbers that are written on here. You can, you can tell that we've labeled these 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and a half, 5, 6, 6 and a half, 7, 8, 9. In fact, a previous music director has gone and made almost the entire hymnal's worth of arrangements that you can just come up here and play. And you can see that they have numbers on them. So you can basically play by numbers. So it helps a lot. All you need is some basic keyboard skills and willing to you know, make mistakes in front of several hundred people every Sunday. So it's really not, not too bad. We're coming up on time, so I'm going to repos reposition the camera. And I'll try to narrate as I do this. So the first thing I'm going to do after the Westminster chime for the half hour is I'm going to play that change ring pattern. But then after that, I'm going to go straight into the Easter music. And the first thing I'm going to play is the Easter tune called I Know That My Redeemer Lives. And what you'll see me do with a lot of these tunes is play the melody by itself. One note at a time. Note, 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 just one at a time. And then the second time through, I will embellish and add some harmony. And since you can only play one note in each hand, the harmony will be uh, with both of my hands playing at the same time. I'm going to make sure I have my camera. The instrument is played roughly like this, and you press down on these levers. Sometimes they're called batons. Uh, sometimes I end up putting my whole hand on them, and you can tell that they've been worn from decades of use, and they're very comfortable to play now because of that. Uh, you'll see as I get going exactly how they get played. I think it's just about time. Okay, here we go. So first, the Westminster chime for the half an hour is up. Before I play the change ring, I better close this trap, otherwise it's going to be too loud in here. OK, 
Okay, here comes the change ring pattern. It starts from the top and goes down, and then the notes start mixing up, you'll see. Next, I'm going to do two more in a row, two more Easter tunes. The first one is the very popular and famous Jesus Christ is Risen Today. I'll go straight then into the Day of Resurrection. And roughly the same formula, where I start with a melody alone, and then you start adding some harmonization. You heard me harmonize some notes below the melody note. This time, uh, for these next ones, I'll also experiment with doing some upper harmony, which is a little more interesting.
the mechanism is touch sensitive. So for this next one, I'll demonstrate some softer playing at the beginning, and then I'll build to get louder. I'll play two stanzas of the hymn, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? And I'll start softly, and then I'll get, that, I'll get louder at the end. Uh, I'll, fo I'll follow that up with Christ the Lord is Risen Today, Alleluia, another Easter hymn. The next one is um, another Easter tune that's also called Christ the Lord is Risen Today. And it has a more ancient origin. And I'm going to try to reflect that by being a little bit more, a little bit um, more of that sound to it. And to tell you what I mean, it's more like I'm going to use a little bit of counterpoint. So I'll start, uh, I'll start by playing the thing completely straight. And then I'll do a little bit of counterpoint where I have one melody going on and then another melody going on. And, and that's the general idea behind what I'm going to do there.
Next, I'll play a tune called Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. There's another gimmick to this one as well. I'll play it straight the first time, and then I'll do what we call in music a cannon or a round. Sort of like think row, row, row your boat. And because I only have so much space to work with, there'll be a little bit of overlap. So I'll play it first straight, and then the second time I play uh, through the melody of Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing, uh, I'll overlap a second uh, version r right on top of it. Next up is the 20th century tune, an Easter tune called Hail Thee Festival Day. It actually can be used for different uh, parts of the church year, but Easter is one of the times it can get used. The composer is Ray Fawn Williams, who uh, we sometimes recognize from other uh, British music of the early 20th century. Next tune is He's Risen, He's Risen.
So this next one's probably the oldest thing I'm going to play. It's called Christ is Arisen, and it comes from a very old chant. Somewhere around um, 10th or 11th century. So it's a very simple melody and unadorned. And what I've decided to do today is um, to tell you that anytime the word Alleluia is in the text, I will harmonize it with two notes. Anytime it's not, I'll just use one note. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to play is the Easter hymn known as The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done. And for this one, I've decided to attempt some three-note chords, which is a little tricky on this instrument. You can only really play two notes at once, and that's really kind of how it's designed. You can't play too many... You don't want to play too many notes at once on these bells because the tones are so rich that it won't sound necessarily good. So three kind of stretches it and you have to move your hand kind of funny to do it, but it's worth trying. So uh, for the strife is or, uh, sometimes you'll see my hands move and I'll try to catch three notes at once and we'll see how that goes.
All right, so the next thing I'll do is a tune called Son of God, Eternal Savior. And uh, my general idea with this one is that I'm just going to try to go fast. Next tune is the Easter tune, This Joyful Easter Tide. If you're really savvy with melodies, you might have noticed that not every single melody works exactly in this range, but we play some anyway. And if there's a note here or there that's above or below the range of this instrument, we just sort of make it work. And This Joyful Easter Tide is such a great tune, but the first note uh, we have to move so that it fits within the range of this instrument. If you know the tune, you might uh, listen for that. Two more is what we have time for, so uh, we'll do In the Cross of Christ I Glory, and then I'll close with Hymn to Joy, which is the Ode to Joy of Beethoven that we know uh, that can be played, that's in the hymnal and that can be played on these bells as well. So first, In the Cross of, in the cross of Christ I Glory will be first.
Okay, it's five o'clock. So it's time to play the Westminster chime for the hour, followed by the strokes that would be Big Ben. So let's hear that. Here would be Big Ben chiming the hour. So it's five o'clock, so we'll chime for five. Thanks for tuning into this. This is really great. I love to show people the inside of this console. A lot of people um, from all over the place, even from not around the area uh, or Orange County or anything like that, including people who go to this church and have never managed to see what it looks like up in here. So um, we're doing another one of these. This has become a regular thing. It's become a really a perfect concert during the pandemic because it's so easy for people to just be outside and listen. And it's also easy for you to tune in like you're doing right now. So. Uh, the first one we did was in the season of Advent, and then I did one in Epiphany, and then in Lent, and this is the fourth one. And that doesn't even count the fact that uh, I did one last year on Easter as well, before we started uh, really cataloging them. So the next one is already scheduled for Pentecost Sunday. It's another celebration in the church year. This year it falls on Sunday, May 23rd. I'll be doing a chime ring on that day uh, at this time at 4.30 and uh, I'll be probably live streaming like this as well. So please check it out, and I hope to see you there, maybe outside this window or, uh, or virtually. Thanks.